Custom bokeh textures are an amazing way to add another layer of realism or creative beauty to your 3D renders. Today I'm going to show you how it's done. I'll see you in Cinema 4D. Alright, here we are in Cinema 4D with the Redshift render view running. I have a scene set up of two cloners full of pirate coins. So the first cloner is an editable cloner. So I made it edible. It's edible. It's editable. I can edit it. <laughs> so what I've done is I've taken these coins and they are able to be used for the composition. So these are my composition coins. And then I have coins for the background that are still currently inside of the cloner. And as I move forward, towards my hero coin here in the middle, you'll see that I can have a nice little composition of coin set up. So how do we get bokeh? Well, you're going to want to use a longer lens. I like portrait lenses, anything from say 50 to 135 millimeter plus. The higher you go in the focal length, the more compression and milky background that field of view is going to change, which allows you to get some nice creamy or milky bokeh said different ways. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is set up an 85 millimeter lens. It's my favorite portrait lens with an aperture of maybe starting at 2.8 and see where that gets us. So what we're going to do here is create a new Redshift camera underneath the object tab in the attribute manager. We're going to set our focal length to 85. Now we're going to see that once we active hit our camera, our field of view is going to change. So I'm going to want to bring this out a ways so that I can see my coin in all of its pirate glory. And at this point now, we're ready to set up the bokeh. So we'll head over to the optical tab. And under depth of field, we'll see that we have our focus distance and an object slot here. Well, I have a focus null set up already, so I'm just going to drag this down into the object so that we're no longer relying on the focus distance that can be manually set. Now it's going to be focusing wherever that null goes, which is currently set up to the center of my coin. Now, underneath aperture here, we'll see that we have bokeh, and we can enable bokeh by clicking on the checkbox, and we'll see that this is going to give us a nice depth of field. Now, the focus that I thought was actually at the center of my hero coin is clearly not. So let's change that. <laughs> what I'm going to do is select my focus null in the object manager. And then we're going to choose the place tool, which is going to allow us to click and drag on our center coin here. And you can see that that little point is following the surface normals of this coin. So we can place this right in the center of our hero coin. And now it works. Very easy way to adjust your focus inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift. All right, back to our move tool. So I don't forget that I have the place tool in use. And at this point now, we've got a really nice bokeh. We can always enhance this a bit further. I think I wanna have a bit more of a shallow depth of field here. So we'll select the Redshift camera. We can head down to our aperture. Remember I said about maybe 2.8. Let's go ahead and make that happen. So we can set our aperture to 2.8. We've got a really nice creamy bokeh here in the background and everything's looking pretty good. Now the bokeh in Redshift looks great. It just doesn't have any life to it, which is what I want to adjust and add with custom bokeh textures. So in order to add bokeh textures here in Redshift, we're going to want to twirl down our bokeh options. And from circular, we're going to choose image. This is what's going to allow us to insert a custom bokeh texture inside of our image slot here. So we're going to be using one of the pro bokeh textures from CG Hacks here and choose one of our four categories. Now I like the idea of using a color split so that we can get some nice chromatic aberration here. And so what we'll do is we'll use one of these notched two designs to give us a nice bit of chromatic aberration along with our bokeh. 
These come in small, medium, and large scale color split for different levels of chromatic aberration. So you can definitely choose one that is going to fit your needs. I like this one here. We can drag that image down into the image slot and then choose no in this case because we don't want to save this in our project path. Now, as soon as I do that, we're going to see this change here inside of the render view where we had a harsh lack of color. Now we're starting to get some really beautiful color splits that are happening. And that's all from the custom bokeh texture. Now we can easily head back into our textures and maybe choose something that's a bit more aggressive with the chromatic aberration. And we can drag that right into our image slot Go ahead and choose no and now we're going to see a lot more of this chromatic aberration and color split it's a very easy way to add a lot of detail to your scene both creatively and maybe more on the photo reel side all right there you have it in this video we talked about using custom bokeh textures in cinema 4d and redshift but also talked about how to set the camera up maybe using more realistic portrait style uh, lenses or focal lengths for your camera to get a nice compression let that depth of field do its magic and also using a lower aperture of something like 2.8 to 1.4 just do your best to mimic actual photography lenses it's going to help you out a lot and then allow you to explore creatively from there so that's it for this video if you want to check out the cg hacks pro bokeh textures check the link in the description and until the next video create more say less and stay creative i'll see you then